All right, I think we will go ahead and, uh, and get started. I appreciate you guys taking part of your Saturday out with us. Uh, before we get going, though, I have two things that I'm going to ask of you. Number one is if you've got your cell phone, please turn it off or silence it. You'd be surprised at how many talks I've done where people have answered their phone in the middle of talk even after I've said that. <laughs> Number two is if you have questions, I'm going to ask you to just write those questions down. Uh, that's why you have the paper and the pen in front of you. Let me get through the information I want to share, and then I promise at the end, if you hang on to your questions, there will be enough time that I can answer them as best I can. Is that fair to ask? Okay. Awesome. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome. You're just fine. We'll get it. Mind your own business, Jim. Jeez. <laughs> so I, I've introduced myself to most of you, but my name is Dr. Brady Weirich. Uh, my background is in chiropractic and functional neurology. Uh, I've been in practice for about 14 years now, and I've done, uh, I've done a lot of work with neuropathy, with diabetes, with other chronic conditions. We've done regenerative medicine, and I've actually been in my own practice up until a couple months ago when Sensor Medica and I got together and they had a vision of building a multidisciplinary clinic and you guys are the first ones that have been in here to do something like this with us. Uh, when we officially open our doors, it'll be, we'll have medical doctors, nurse practitioners, PAs, myself, physical therapy, all inside of one roof so the answers will all be coming from here so that you can get the best care that you can get. So. We're excited that you're here. I'm excited to talk about neuropathy. I have my own personal experience about neuropathy. I went through cancer about 10 years ago and I had chemotherapy. Chemotherapy induces what is known as a drug-induced neuropathy. So if you talk to me about that funny feeling underneath your feet, like your socks have rolled over and that seam is bundled up underneath your toes, I know exactly what that feels like. I know what it feels like to feel like you're walking on cardboard all the time. I've been there or rocks. I also know what it feels like to sit down with a doctor and say, I've got these symptoms, and the doctor look at you and say, it's hell to get old. Or, you've got neuropathy, learn how to deal with it. Anybody else been there? I was 31 when he told me that, by the way, it's hell to get old, 31. Okay. I have two objectives today, two goals that I want to meet. Number one, I want to have you guys walking out of here knowing more about neuropathy than your family doctor. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say that. There's a lot of... <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> she, goes, she said that isn't hard. <laughs> Number two, I hope that what I say makes enough sense to you that you actually make an appointment so that we can sit down together, look at your neuropathy, and come, with, come up with a plan about how to actually fix it. Those are my two objectives. Fair? Okay. I also like being crystal clear when I begin. Uh, Medicare, when it comes to Medicare and neuropathy, about the only thing they'll pay for is medication. They don't like to pay for anything else, uh, but we're very clear about what's covered, what's not covered, so that you know ahead of time exactly what things are gonna cost before you do anything that costs you money. Is that fair? So there is some of this that will be covered. There's some of it that will, be not, that will not be, but we need to sit down, we'll do the exam, and then we'll figure out where it is and where we need to go from there. Okay? All right, let's go. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to define this word. I want to spell this word. <laughs> Peripheral neuropathy. What does that mean? Hey, if you look at the neuropathy part of that, we break the word into two parts. The neuro part, guess what that means? That means nerve. The pathy part, do you know what that means? Problem. Kind of a dumb diagnosis, isn't it? Congratulations, you have a nerve problem. Hey, the peripheral part of it at least gives us an idea of where that nerve problem is. You have two parts of your nervous system. You have the central nervous system and you have the peripheral nervous system. 
Guess where the central nervous system is? Your brain and your spinal cord. Guess where the peripheral nervous system is? Everything else. So now we know peripheral nerve or peripheral peripheral neuropathy comes from a nerve outside of the central nervous system and it's having a problem. This is not groundbreaking stuff yet. Okay? Now, there are three types of nerve problem or of neuropathy. The most common one is caused by it's diabetic neuropathy. The second one is drug-induced chemotherapy. There's other drugs that can cause it, okay? but it is drug-induced. The third one is called idiopathic. Can anyone define what idiopathic means? A person that's an idiot. It means that we're idiots and we don't know where it's coming from. This is a neuropathy coming from an undiagnosed origin. In other words, it's that person that can't feel their feet. And nobody can, you're not diabetic. You're not on chemo, so it must be coming from somewhere else. Possibly. Okay. Do you know what all of these have in common? Every single one of these is caused by a lack of blood flow. I had a patient that came in to me that his doctor had actually given him Viagra for his neuropathy. Sounds crazy, but I actually give that doctor credit. At least he's thinking. Okay. If you take a blood vessel that's this big around and you put this much inflammation in there, how much blood gets through that blood vessel? Not enough. Okay, your nerves need two things to survive. They need number one is fuel. Number two is activation. Everybody's still on the same page. No one's walked out of here yet. We're, we're ahead. Anna, there's a roll of paper towels in the bathroom in the entryway. Will you please go grab those? I'm going to need to erase. Or, or Marco. Okay, so let's talk about neuroanatomy. There's three main parts of a nerve. I'm an artist, I know, right? <laughs> Up here, you have what's called the cell body. This is the powerhouse of the cell. This is where the nucleus is, where all the action happens. Then you have this long, long skinny part called the axon. When, I, when we think about the axon, think about a copper wire. Someone describe a copper wire for me. It's a conductor, okay? Long piece of filament. What's going through that copper wire? Electrical impulses. I said that wrong. What's in the middle part? It's the copper, right? What surrounds the copper? Insulation. Nerves are the exact same way. They also have an insulation. It's a layer of fat around them. But they also have a conductor going down the middle, and they transmit electrical impulses just like a copper wire. Then they come to what we call the nerve, whoops, the nerve ending, wherever that nerve is going, that's a nerve. What people don't think about is this nerve has a blood supply. And when you restrict that blood supply to the nerve, what does that feel like? Or excuse me, I said that wrong. What's going to happen? The nerve will die. Okay, you're, you're dead on. Think about a tree. Pretend it's summer and it's not 18 degrees outside. 
<laughs> if we take a tree and we stop watering that tree today, is it going to be dead tomorrow? No. It's going to take a while. A, let's say in a week, what does the tree look like? The leaves are starting to shrivel. It's getting a little sketchy, right? So at that week point, if, after that week, if you start giving that tree water and fertilizer and sunshine, what's going to happen to the tree? It's going to get better. These nerves work on that same principle. If you give them fuel and if you give them activation, what's going to happen? They can get better. Now, there is a point of no return, and this is why we were talking before we started. We want to see, are you past that point of no return? Because if they're not, or excuse me, I said that wrong. If you are, I'm going to look you in the eye and join every other doctor that you've seen and say, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. But if there's still that glimmer of hope that's in there, then we can start reversing this. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the most common pathway that gets affected. I'm just curious. You don't have to raise your hand. I don't want to make you do anything you don't want to do. How many people have the problem in their feet? Pretty much everybody. Hey, anybody in your hands? Hey, the story in your hands is the same. It's just the name of the nerves are different. The pathway is identical. But I'm going to stick to the feet because the words aren't quite as long and I don't stumble over my words as much. Fair? Okay. This is a foot. <laughs> Impressive, isn't it? Okay. Coming from your feet, you basically have four nerves. You have two from the top, you have two from the bottom. Those nerves are going to come up and they're going to connect right behind your knee. And they're going to form one really big nerve that I know you all know the name of that nerve. Starts with an S, ends with an iatic. That's the sciatic nerve. Okay. The sciatic nerve is going to go up and it's going to take branches. Let's go this way. It's going to take branches from L4, L5, S1, S2. Okay. Those nerves are going to enter into your spinal column and they're going to travel up till they get to about right here at about L1. That's when they form together into your spinal cord. So if you just look at that picture and the problem is in your feet, how many areas can the nerve, how many areas are there that the nerve can be affected? There's a lot, okay? The most common areas are going to be in the spine itself, and then right here down around the knee, sometimes in the ankle. We good? Okay. So these nerves are going to come in, and they're going to form your spinal cord. If I were to take your spinal cord, cut it in half this way, and flip it over like this, that's what it looks like. Okay, so it's like you're looking down the tube of my pen. All right? Now... Your spinal cord has gray matter and white matter just like your brain does. Okay, the inside of this butterfly looking thing is the gray matter. The outside is the white matter. <coughs> you know what makes it white and what makes it gray? The white comes from the fat, from the insulation going around the nerves. The grays don't have as much fat, so they look gray. It's gee whiz, right? <laughs> These nerves are going to go into the back part of your spinal cord just like this. They're going to leave a little branch and they're going, to get, they're going to cut over here to the back part of your cord and then travel up. Okay, and then they're going to cross over to your brain. This pathway has a very fancy name. It's called the Large Diameter Afferent Pathway, or in English, it means the really big nerve going up. <laughs> this is the biggest pathway in the human body. And because it's the biggest, what do you think the fuel supply looks like for that pathway? 
massive. So when you start disrupting that fuel supply with things like diabetes or oxidative stress or gut problems or any number of things, guess what's going to get affected first? It's that pathway. Okay, so when that pathway starts to die, guess what it feels like? Wadded up socks under your feet. Walking on marshmallows, walking on cardboard. Uh, what else have I heard? <laughs> walking on rocks. That's where it starts. Okay. Now, that same pathway, I'm not going to draw all the nerves out again, but there's another pathway that follows that same route. Okay. But it's going to come into this part of the cord right here. It's going to make a junction. It's going to travel to the front part of your cord and then up and over to your brain. Does anybody want to take a guess as to why I drew that in red? That is your pain pathway. So if this pathway, if this large diameter afferent pathway is this big, the pain pathway is less than the size of, it's actually about the size of that right there. That's the ratio. They're tiny. They don't move as fast. They don't have as much of that insulation wrapped around them. But a very interesting thing happens right here at your spinal cord. In the papers, it's called this thing called the pain gate, meaning the black nerves actually inhibit the red nerves and keep you from feeling them all of the time. Now, it's not a bad thing. You're supposed to feel pain. It's a warning sign that something's wrong. If you get a tack through your foot, you want to know about it so it hurts. But it shouldn't feel like that all of the time. <laughs> so as these nerves lose their function, the black nerves, you feel the red nerves more and more. So on a day-to-day -day basis, this is what it feels like. You're just walking around, up doing your thing, and it feels like you're walking on rocks or you feel that kind of numb sensation, or it may just feel totally normal to you. But as soon as you get off your feet and kick your legs up to watch the news or to watch the basketball game or to go to bed, all of a sudden what happens? The pain nerves kick in and it feels like your feet are in a sack of wasps. I've heard that one too. Does that sound familiar to anyone? That sensation of not being able to have the sheets touch your feet. That's exactly where that's coming from. Okay, so those are the symptoms that you're experiencing. You go see your doctor, and what does your doctor do? Okay, gabapentin or Neurontin. I can't, I don't know, Cymbalta. My spelling's embarrassing. <laughs> what do those do to help repair the nerves? Nothing. What they're doing is they're blocking the pain receptors up here in your brain so you can't feel it. Is that a bad thing? No. It's a necessary thing. You have to survive. You have to sleep. But it's not a permanent thing. You want to fix the problem. Okay. So the number one thing we want to do is assess where those nerves are at. Can I erase this? Does everybody have what they want from here? Okay. I should have bought three of these boards, Marco. <laughs> I might go back and get another one. So, those, that nerve pathway, that large diameter afferent pathway, they, the things that it does is, number one, it carries vibration sense. 
So what will typically happen is I'll sit down with you and I'll ask the dumbest question I could possibly ask. I can't stop myself from asking it even after 14 years of practice. You know what that question is? How are you? I know I asked you because I ask everybody, how are you? Well, if I was great, then I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> hey, it's not my first rodeo. Once I get to know you a little bit, I'm going to ask you some questions about your history. Hey, what kind of medications are you taking? What do things look like? When did this start? One of the things that I've noticed over my career is that there is a timeline that's usually involved. That timeline starts the year that you were born. I'll put my own birth date in there. And then it goes up until where we are now. At some point, something happened where you have some sort of stressful event or whatever. And that's when, the, when things start to go drastically south. So we will talk about your timeline. When did this start? What was going on around that time? Because stress very much can induce the symptoms that you're experiencing. Okay. So once we get to the exam part, the first thing we're going to do is get a vibration fork. I had a lady in here this week. She was so afraid that I was going to poke her with needles and shock her. You guys had that test done? It's freaking barbaric. And it, it hurts like the Dickens. And it's just, it's, it's old news. It's antiquated. Yes, they can tell you exactly the velocity of that nerve. They can tell you exactly what that nerve is. And Medicare will pay them to do that. But what do they do with the information? You have neuropathy, here's your pills. Drives me nuts. Sorry, I'm back, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is bust out a vibration fork. Can you feel vibration on your shoulders, on your thumbs, on your toes? How do they compare to those areas? Okay. Next thing we're gonna look at is light touch. My favorite, is I will take, your, uh, take the patient's feet and I will touch two of their toes. And I'll ask them how many toes are between the two that I'm touching. And I get these, it's not a personal attack, but you strike me as the rancher type. <laughs> I get these ranchers in here. <laughs> I can't feel you touching any of my toes. <laughs> hey. You can't feel me touching your toes. How does your brain know where your feet are? And if your brain doesn't know where your feet are, what's going to happen when you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom? Neuropathy can't kill you, but whacking your head on the dresser can. Okay. We look at joint position sense. We have two ways of doing this. The first way is I'm just going to take your, your toe and I'm going to move it and see if you can tell me what direction it's moving. Hey, if you can't feel vibration sense and I take your toe and I almost break it in half and you can't feel it move, you might be past that point of no return. Mm -hmm. And we will have that discussion as much as I hate it, but it is what it is. Hey, we also look at what's called two-point discrimination. That's a two. <laughs> two-point discrimination. I also look at things like reflexes. You guys know that you have more than two reflexes? You have 11? I'm gonna check, all I'm gonna check 10 of them and I'm not gonna whack you in the chin for the 11th. Okay, but what do your reflexes look at your upper extremity compared to your lower extremity? That's all information of how, how and where is this nerve coming from? Okay, this is how I'm gonna figure out is it coming from just neuropathy or is there still compression issues that are happening up here? All of that comes from here. Okay. Once we do that, then we get a little more high tech. There's still no needles involved. I promise we're not going to poke you with anything. Have I been clear about that? <laughs> okay. Then we're going to look at things like biometric analysis. We want to know what your gait looks like. 
Okay, so there are some things that we're going to have you do, some platforms that we're going to have you stand on and walk across, because we're going to measure exactly what that gait looks like, and we're going to measure what's called proprioception. A proprioception is your brain seeing where your joints are in space. Once we do these, then we can come up with a treatment plan. Can anyone guess what the number one focus of the treatment plan 99% of the time is? When you're seeing a ear specialist. No. Ear and balance specialist. Right? <laughs> Not even close. I appreciate the effort. Number one's blood flow. Now you were close. We want to get blood flow going back to those nerves. What happens with a tree when we start watering it and fertilizing it again? The tree comes back, gets more healthy. Okay, some of those tools at our disposal include things like laser, okay, shockwave therapy. I, we got to think of a better name than shockwave therapy. It sounds so barbaric. Okay, but this device sitting right here on the counter by my cup actually produces a sound wave that travels into, it goes through ultrasound gel into the nerve endings to start restoring the blood flow to the nerve endings. Okay, we do things like peripheracy. So number two, our focus will be on nerve stimulation. A shock wave and laser are our blood flow, nerve stimulation, we usually have people do at home. Uh, it is something that we call peripheral neuropathy rehab therapy, where we literally look, hook electrodes up here and fire them on the same frequency that that nerve pathway fires on. Okay. Then we help you reduce your oxidative stress. What's the number one cause of neuropathy issues? Blood flow. What's the number one disruptor of blood flow? Of blood flow? Oxidative stress. Now, this gets very personal here. I will talk to you one on one about this, but this does involve diet. We have a high, we have a very poor habit of eating what's called the standard American diet. When we eat the standard American diet, it increases our inflammation levels. When we increase our inflammation levels, what happens to our blood flow? It goes down. Can we get your nerves better without doing that part of it? Yes, we can. But you're going to be back here more often than you want to be because it's going to come back. So what do I want to do? I want to teach you how to take care of yourself. I got through this in record time. There's got to be something I forgot. <laughs> hey. So the next step is if what I said makes sense to you, my schedule is sitting right there on that clipboard. Hey, come talk to me. Let's get you set up for that first initial visit. Let's just start figuring out where we're at. Okay. Normally that first visit we charge $120 for, we're going to charge $39 for it. The hitch is this, you got to make the appointment today, you're going to pay for it today, understanding that if you don't show up, you're going to get charged for it anyway. Of course. No, you can't. It's my schedule. Well, I got grandbabies that watch on Tuesday. I, I totally get it. I got some Wednesdays that are open to you on there. Okay. Now, I've said everything I want to say. I'm going to turn the video camera off, and I'm going to let you guys ask whatever you want. And then we will call it a, call it a day. So thank you.